Hi everyone, we are about to start. Hello, hello, welcome back. I am again in my parents' workshop basement in Switzerland. This morning I was in Berlin. I woke up at, well, 3.30 or 4, something like that, and went on the plane. And it's kind of amazing how quickly we adapt to a new situation, like a new environment. Also with the masks, things are different. The, the language is different. The weather is a little bit different. <sighs> a lot is going on for me and today I'd like to talk a lot and I'll try to draw at the same time we're going to draw a hermit crab which I thought was fitting this little fellow um, I wanted to give a quick update before we go into drawing also on what's going on with Patrick's project I think wait I think this is here. So for those of you that were watching the last two sessions, I was working on the design here. And we did a couple steps. First, we added wooden beams. This is for a fresco and sgraffito technique. And so marking where our decorative pattern is going to go. Then one layer of plaster and this is lime lime based wait this is a different word limestone in english there's a better word it's kalk in german so it's one layer of this then it starts to dry then a second layer goes on top and that layer has pigment in it so it's a dark layer of plaster then that dries and a third and then finally fourth layer of lime man i should remember what this is called properly i'm calling it lime plaster now in german kalk putz so one layer smooth it out let it dry a bit and then second layer and then while the last two layers are wet still or moist we scratch we have made this pattern or patrick made this pattern and we combined, this is called the scraffito technique, where you scratch. So we're scratching all the way to the, uh, the layer with the pigment. And then here you see where it's indented. I transferred the drawing that Patrick and I made of a female figure, kind of stylized decorative element. 
and that is getting painted into the wet plaster. So a fresco or fresco painting. And it's a little stressful because also sun and wind and drying time. So you have to be fast enough to do the part that you, where you put plaster and scratch it and paint it before it dries. You can work a little bit by taping with this plastic to keep things moist, spraying with the water bottle occasionally. Um, and we put also a big board to just block the sun, which helped. Here's Alexandra, a friend of Patrick's, doing the fresco painting. We all did some of the figures. We tried to keep it unified while still having variation. And here there's the final cleanup step is missing in this picture, where you see these uh, parts where some of the plaster is starting to press out toward us. It's catching the light. That gets cleaned up afterwards. It was so much fun to spend the days uh, making this because at the end of the day, there's really like I felt like I did something. I changed a building, even if it's just a decoration. Um, if we did everything properly, which I think we did, this should last a couple hundred years <laughs> on the outside of the building. Who knows what will happen to the building by then. So I think two sides are done now and the third side is missing still. And we're gonna go back up there tomorrow to the mountains. Um, so we will draw this drawing, or sorry, draw from this photograph. And the method I usually use is this block-in method, going with the top, bottom, left, right, big shapes, medium shapes, small shapes. Today I'll try something different, which is a different method, which is called window shading. So we'll start at, a, at the focal point of the image and then just work out from there. You can do the same thing if you want to follow along or you can draw any way you want. I will be zooming in as I'm doing the window shading, so it might be helpful for you to also do window shading. Um, also, before I start, I want to talk about why I titled this episode Coming Out. Um, last night I was speaking with a friend of mine who is gay and he's quite a bit older than me and he had a hetero relationship and a child and had no, no suspicions that he would be gay and then one day he just met up with a friend and he just knew or they both knew i think they both had families and regular relationships and i think sometimes life surprises us and offers us things to look at or not look at and i've made the i'm playing right now with looking at the things that life offers me, especially if they're uncomfortable or scary, and I don't want to look at them because I think a lot of growth can come from that. And where we had that conversation, it was at a dinner, and when I went to this restaurant in Berlin last night, I left the metro station and I saw a toy guitar in the bushes with some, it looked like trash, like it wasn't a toy guitar that someone had left there to be like with his other things. It was left as trash. It was pretty obvious. And it caught my eye, but I kept walking. And then as I kept walking, I thought, what if I bring this guitar to the party, to the dinner? And then immediately my conscious mind my critical mind said don't be silly you can't do that it's it was a quite fancy place uh, where I was going so all these reasons why you can't do that started coming and because I've been practicing this listening to what is calling my attention and then just going with it doing the scary thing I stopped <laughs> and I turned around and I went back to the guitar and I picked it up and I walked with it and on the way to the restaurant 
I started playing with it and it made a terrible sound, but also a kind of beautiful sound. Totally broken, totally out of tune. It, it's a toy guitar, you know, it's not meant to be a proper guitar. But my whole mood changed, my whole the expectation for the evening. Now I was really curious what was about to happen as I walk in with this silly guitar to this nice place. And I brought it in and, and people commented on it. And we I did bring it out later on. I didn't do anything crazy. I didn't like crazy for me. This is all relative too. Um, but what was important, I think, for me is to start doing these things. Because being a person that enters a fancy restaurant with a silly toy guitar, that's a more exciting life than not having a toy guitar, <laughs> you know? And there are so many things like that that I'm noticing in my life where for most of my life, I'm just saying, I can't do that. That's for whatever reason. Also in the last few days, I'm like talking to someone that I find attractive. There was a woman that I find, found attractive and I wanted to talk to her, but this shyness, this insecurity. And then I did and it turned out beautiful, you know, good things happened. <laughs> we had a conversation, we had a lovely conversation. Um, there were so many moments like this right now and I'd like to encourage all of you that are listening to notice where those moments happen for you. There are probably things right now that you know you should do but there's some fear around it. They can be small things or big things, doesn't really matter. But the, what I'm learning is that when a moment like that comes, when an impulse arises and I follow it despite the fear, something good happens, something exciting happens. And when I have an impulse and I let the fear keep me from doing it, then either nothing happens or something kind of ugh, <laughs> not great happens. And I, well, I guess always I'm, I'm disappointed by missing the opportunity. And the opportunities go really quickly. They pass by really quickly. So I don't know how much useful things I can say about this topic, but it's really present right now for me. And I think it's something that's useful to think about. So right now I'm doing a very rough, I guess you could call it an envelope, like very rough block in placement stage. And well, my mind right now goes to maybe some of you are wondering if this is my coming out video <laughs> and I don't think it is about, about being gay. I have thought about that and just kind of inquired, but I don't really feel interested in men. <laughs> I like women. Um, but what did happen in my inquiring is that I lost the fear of, of being touched by a man. And I think that's a great thing. If I want to cuddle or whatever with a man, now I'm open to it. It can happen. It's, I think it can be nice. <sighs> Doing this video, by the way, which it might be obvious, but maybe not. Titling this video the way it's titled and talking about these things for me was an impulse that I decided to follow. And I'm wearing sports clothing because I know I'm going to sweat a lot <laughs> because I'm uncomfortable. But the impulse was there. And I think something good is going to come from it. So a challenge to talk and draw at the same time. I'm not going to do much more with the placement. I'm going to zoom in on the crab's arm there 
and then start developing, which actually all of that is a bit too high. Let's do this. Oh, right, about the guitar, I actually have a picture here. <laughs> this is the guitar I picked up. I don't know what happened to it at the end of the party. Uh, we, maybe we left it or someone else took it. Um, so this following of impulses when things are scary is related to courage for me. So I guess you could also say that when life invites you to be courageous, or I'll speak for myself, when life invites me to be courageous and I do it, I am taking some meaningful courageous action. Now I've learned to look for the, the good thing that's about to happen and it, all, it, it does. So if you're following along, you can focus in on your drawing on this, huh. what is it called, clam, no, this part, see my, <laughs> this is interesting and uh, I might delete this video after and I hope it's not I hope it's enjoyable for you to watch, or entertaining at least. Um, I'm observing as I'm drawing, as, an, as I'm speaking about something important but uncomfortable, I'm noticing my own nervous system at work. Like, I'm a little bit now in fight or flight mode. So, my brain doesn't work as well as it does usually. So when I want to speak to someone who is attractive or interesting to me, in the past, it used to be really bad. It, it used to be when I walk down the street, just in a random place, I walk down the street and someone is walking on my side of the street on the sidewalk, walking towards me. I would often change to the other sidewalk because it was so uncomfortable for me to confront that person, to be to interact. I don't know what the diagnosis levels are for social anxiety, but I felt and still feel many times in life and in social interactions, I feel very uncomfortable. And I don't want to <laughs> feel that way, so I'm working on it and I'm practicing. Because I think it's a skill. And the calmer I am when I approach someone, the calmer they will feel, because they can feel if I'm stressed or anxious. And I guess for all of us, there will be that, that impulse to talk to someone, or connect with someone, or do something. And then there's the fear response. The, yeah, and then the rational mind comes in and tries to convince us to not do that thing that we actually do want to do. Drawing wise, I'm looking for shadow shapes right now, or shapes of dark value. And I will try to keep this to about an hour, so we might actually not go much beyond this part of the image, but then um, develop it as much as we can in the time we have. I'd like to hear your thoughts since this is live. Um, feel free to put in the comments maybe what you struggle with, what where your fears are. For me, it's definitely social interactions. Oh, singing. <laughs> I am 
very scared of being heard singing and I like doing it but I only do it when I'm absolutely sure that nobody can hear me uh, my favorite places to sing are next to a waterfall <laughs> where it's really really loud and then when I do sing I sing a few notes I hear my voice I feel the music and the tear starts coming <laughs> very often so I know there's something there there's something emotional and I want to explore that and for now I can't get myself to explore that with people or it's 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 hard it's uncomfortable I've done it a few times and, and those times have been encouraging and nice By the way, for those of you that don't know, this animal is a hermit crab, and that's why I chose it. Hermit crabs look for a shell, an empty shell, and they go inside, and they're vulnerable, they don't have protection, so they go and live inside the shell, and they eat, and they move around in the shell, and as they eat and age, they grow, and they at some point no longer fit in their shell. So they have to come to a very delicate transition moment, a coming out, where they have to leave their safety, protection, their shell, and go find a bigger shell, a new house. When they do, they go into the new shell and they're safe again for a little bit, but they keep growing. Life is growth. So that process repeats in cycles. And I feel like I am, I am moving towards a coming out moment artistically and psychologically and personally I'm, I don't know yet but the last 10 years I've, I've focused on teaching I haven't done much of my art and I have very high expectations which you know is a lot of pressure I put so much pressure on myself that I stop trying And all these creative ways to make my own life miserable, which probably some of you have have your own ways of making things difficult, whether that's in a relationship or in art or in your work or whatever it is. Something that's also changing for me is how I think of people. I used to think that people are just not that important to me. You know, there is work, there is food, there is, I don't know, different interests. And people is just one interest. And I thought that this area of people is just, I'm not that interested. And that's not important. And I'm really changing my attitude. I think life happens in context in connection to other people and maybe now with all this isolation going on that's even more noticeable and relevant let me take a look at the chat to see if there's anything that i can hold on to <laughs> as i flail here and try to follow my own associations Are you going to keep this video, this live video? I don't know, honestly. Right now I feel like 70% yes. Um, but, you know, I might delete it. But that kind of defeats the point, you know. This is a courageous act for me, a meaningful courageous act. And probably in a couple of months and definitely in a couple of years, when I look at this video, I will cringe. I will, <laughs> it will hurt. Um, the whole series of this draw with Dorian is also for myself a practice to speak while I'm on camera, to become more comfortable with who I am and how I am. Because most of my life I've been obsessed with this irrational fear of not being enough, of not being loved, of not being accepted. And I 
know where this probably came from and I might talk about it I don't know if it's too intimate for you guys for me I'm very open about these things but sometimes I think it's a bit too much for people so I'm not sure if I'll go there um, but yeah I'm 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 doing the thing right now that I encourage you to do and I'm doing it with this video and speaking and yeah with, with what I'm doing um, and I'm also going to do it with art and you I want you to do that with whatever it is maybe you are gay and you have to come out to to be who you are maybe I don't know I don't know what it is for you and it, it can be small things where you are not true to who you are you put yourself you you censor yourself you you don't speak the truth you don't speak what is there and that I think is really not good because then the person you're interacting with doesn't know what's going on and then they cannot respond to what is really there in you so you have to I mean you have to you don't have to do anything but I'm making the the experience I'm having the experience that the more open and honest and real I am the deeper and more rewarding that relationships are that I have I do see the chat <laughs> I'm just going through now and actually it's going a bit too fast so give me a second I missed a few things and <laughs> I just noticed I'm humming <laughs> one day I might sing for you guys like Marshall does Marshall Vandruff if you guys know him uh... okay there's an interesting comment from Frederico I think if you have good friends you can be authentic with them without worries but dropping your persona when you're with strangers can be dangerous I don't know what you what dangers there are for you for me it can I mean yes don't give your address don't give your phone number on YouTube you know it can be dangerous like that but I don't think there's anything to lose by being open with what is going on inside of you what's happening really truthfully you might be attacked but the thing that that is attacked like first of all if you speak your truth and someone else is offended or can't handle it that is theirs that's not your thing to deal with and if they call you something bad that's their problem you can i i really believe and i know you can be in a place where you cannot be insulted because you are speaking your truth and this is not the same as speaking your truth in the sense of this is how I see it and that's how I stand and your opinion doesn't matter no <laughs> be open but if the other person is not open then that is their loss continuing to read to live is to serve others I think this is why we work to build a better future for others that will come later it's basically a logic of evolution yeah and also be kind to ourselves in the process yeah Kim made a good point also about learning when we make mistakes if you don't risk making a mistake you're not going to learn from the mistake you're going to keep doing what you already know how to do and you're not going to evolve so maybe it's like the hermit crab who stays inside of that shell and i don't know what happens to them probably that doesn't happen they eventually have to leave but i don't know i'm not an expert on hermit crabs but maybe they die if they don't leave the shell 
we are going to draw today a hermit crab. Speaking your mind on social media. Yeah, I mean, yes, and I'm not the person to give advice on that. And speaking your mind, I, am, I read that as a lot of people speak their mind against something, the things that they disagree with. Stop this, stop that. I think it's much more important to speak your mind about who you are. And I'm not sure how that's different from what you believe. But I see way too much confrontation and way too little listening and noticing and actual courage because telling someone they're wrong, there's nothing courageous in that and you're not going to grow and they're not going to grow. Okay, let me go back to, sorry, uh, yeah, yeah. See, I'm not thinking well. <laughs> I'm screwing up the images. But I do feel a bit calmer already. Um, all of this should be darker. Okay, so... What else? Right now, what's going through my mind is um, whether I'm selfish for using this platform to talk about my own fears and bore and burden you with, with that. Um, and so every sentence I have now <laughs> adds to, to this reason for stopping, but whatever. Um, There is something to the approach that's the opposite of what I'm doing. What I'm doing now is saying, I'm afraid of these things and I'm doing it. Here, let's do it together. Let's, let's make it a topic and act on it. The other thing you can do is actually fake it till you make it. If I had come, well, actually most classes, most drawn Dorian, Draw with Dorian, draw on Dorian, that could be good too. <laughs> draw with Dorian sessions. I feel nervous. I don't feel relaxed, but I don't bore you with telling you how nervous I am and blah, 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 blah. That's really not great teaching. That's not a entertaining, it's not, <laughs> it's not good. You don't go to a presentation or a concert to hear the music stammer and tell you how nervous they are. Shut up, just play. So that's what I do most of the time. I just swallow the nervousness and do it anyway. And maybe that's more what creates the change than what I'm doing now, which is talking about things. But I guess I'm also doing it, so all good. Um, Hmm. You may notice I'm keeping drawing pretty light. I'll make a black mark now so you see the contrast. I'm way off, like way lighter than black, somewhere up here. And I like working like that because I can draw the same thing kind of in passes. If you make too many passes, it gets very slow. So if I take a value that's a little bit darker now, maybe that's even too much. Let's do this. And then I have to, or have to, I get to redraw everything now in this tone. And some things will stay the tone they are now, but then I have to draw it again and draw a little bit darker. You can do 20 passes like that, and that's not very efficient. But if you do two or three, I think it can be quite a good way to be able to correct the drawing, correct the proportions, and not create anything that is so dark that you can't erase it anymore, especially with traditional media, which some of you, I assume, are working in. 
digital doesn't matter that much so I'm gonna go dark So maybe while you're drawing, think of something that you've been meaning to do, but you've been too scared to do it. And commit to, tr to doing it, to taking the first step. We have about 20 minutes left. I'm going quite slowly. You guys may be ahead of me. If this was pencil, I would now go with a sharper point and erase the earlier sketchy lines and keep sharp, clean lines where I want them. So the line thickness also goes from thicker lines to thinner, more precise lines. And wherever I want, I can keep the thicker lines to have some variety, have some range of style or treatment. It's very useful if you can break the contour and show on the contour of the object the surface, these little Bubbles communicate a lot of information. It's a subtle thing, but very useful. Oh man, right now I feel like I'm going to delete this video. <laughs> um, yeah, like maybe it's unnecessarily personal, like my sexual preference. Who cares? Why do I need to tell talk about that here and archive it? It's not important or public information. I mean, not relevant information. I'd love to hear in the chat uh, something scary that you've done or that you've changed your relationship to. For me, definitely public speaking, like doing presentations in front of people. In primary school, high school, I was terrified. I was sick, like staying at home actually with symptoms several times to not do a presentation. I did not want to become a teacher. I didn't want to teach. I didn't think I could teach. And I was in a situation where I kind of owed a friend of mine to do a class that he had put together for me. He had found students for me and changed his apartment to, to accommodate, uh, I think, three or four easels. And I, I thought, I, yeah, at that point I couldn't bow out, but I was super scared. My first drawing lesson, I was so, so, so afraid and uncomfortable before it started. And then I was there and I realized I actually really enjoy it. And the people valued what I had to offer. And now I love it. I actually enjoy this, I mean, today, you know, art-wise, drawing-wise, it's a little bit lean on information, but I hope usually you learn something. And with things like the shading course or the accuracy guide, where I put much more time into preparing the materials than in these Monday sessions, I hope, well, people tell me that they benefit. 
and so I enjoy it and people benefit and that's something that's definitely changed for me through just practice and being encouraged also yeah that's another thing I could point out look for cheerleaders Find people that believe in you, that encourage you in whatever this is that you struggle with. Because I think none of us really do it alone. Even the people that say they are self-made, this and that, there are people in their life, I guarantee you, that believe in them, that encourage them. So what I said before with, with people not being important to me, I realize, I think maybe it's through me being the person that sometimes encourages students and sees in them that they can do it, they can learn this thing, that I understand the value of having people around me that do that same thing for me. Not because I ask them to, but just happens organically, naturally. Made a mistake there, not a big deal. And I'm gonna check the chat, check the chat for a second. Hmm. Denny, thank you for sharing that. He says, I'm learning alone and I have a very hard time posting. Last time I posted, my head hurt and I couldn't sleep, so I deleted the picture. When you first started, did you feel like it would never, like you will never become good? <sighs> yes, <laughs> many times. And I've given up, I've given up art several times. I've realizing I'm not going to be as good as I want to be. So what's the point? Like, stop trying. And definitely that thing about not posting. Um, I'm going to go back here so you can see the image, but I'll keep talking for a moment. I have done that for sure. Um, there was a time after I graduated from Florence, from Angel Academy in Florence. I was studying at the art department, an online school, and also like they had physical studios and also online classes. And there were classes where either I would somehow convince myself not to do the homework because it wasn't important enough, I had other more urgent things to do, uh, I found excuses not to do the work and if I did the work and I wasn't happy with it I very often didn't post it that is so stupid I mean I had some fantastic teachers there and I brought myself like I cheated myself out of the opportunity to have professionals very skilled artists and teachers look at my work and give me feedback on where I am now only because I was too afraid of, I don't know what, not being good enough, not being accepted, not being loved. And I think an important thing is to not, and I'm still working on this, but I think that's really, really important. And it's something that Patrick speaks about. And it, it's about guilt and shame maybe more shame, especially shame. So when I decided not to post an assignment for review, because I didn't want my peers, my, the other students and my teacher to see how bad I am, I was ashamed of not posting it. I've been, I was ashamed of being a coward. And that's just a perfect double whammy. That's great strategy to get depressed and to stop. And I know that from first-hand experience. And I have compassion with anyone who's, who goes through that. And when you, if you're in the same situation, maybe it's with art, maybe it's with something else, like you go to parties, you can't talk to boys or girls because you're too shy 
and then you feel guilty and ashamed but not guilty i think it's really shame you feel ashamed of yourself for being such a loser such a shy guy such a fill in the blank don't do that the moment you can have compassion with yourself i think that downward spiral stops and it can start going upwards you are the way you are because of the things you've experienced because of the parents you have the things they have experienced so i think we didn't choose the situations that we encounter but we can choose how we respond to the situation that arises right now Yeah, I think that is such important work. When you speak with someone who has done that work, I think you can feel it. Because they are not going to attack you or make you feel small or anything. If, if you speak to someone and you're nervous and they know what it feels like to be nervous, they either inside of them or outwardly towards you they'll encourage you and that's what friends are for i guess too and you can be your own friend you can be your own like compassionate with with where you are right now and then take a meaningful courageous action and see where it leads and my guess is it will lead to somewhere fun and exciting where you feel more alive and where all of a sudden you have a pink guitar <laughs> in your hands entering a fancy restaurant These things that I'm drawing right now might be tricky for you, for those of you who are working with traditional media, but if you have a mechanical eraser, like should be in my pocket, there's always, almost always, a pencil and one of these in my pocket. With these needle erasers, mechanical erasers, you can do things like what I'm doing now. Oops. You know, drawing by removing graphite or charcoal. Take another peek at the chat. Okay, there's a lot. Uh, when can I read the chat while you guys see my screen? I think not right now. I have only one screen. So give me a second while I read the chat. Maybe you can read too. Mm. Okay, there was a question about putting cross contours on it. I can do that in a second. The bubble and shell is the same value. How can you make it separate in a grayscale drawing? bubble and shell I'm not sure what the bubble is but if there is no contrast and you want to show contrast you can do it with a line by making the line a bit stronger or by giving one material dark, a darker value pushing it inventing it oh Massey thank you very much and also I want to thank everyone who commented on Stan's video well I guess my video <laughs> that uh, Stan published on his channel or the video we did together we wrote the script together so it's really a collaboration for those of you that haven't seen it um, it's called mind-blowing shading tricks and I'll put the chat the the link in the chat as well I'm you know I'm happy with how it turned out I really enjoyed the process and 
people seem to like it and that's more than I can ask for. The comments on YouTube are pretty rough often, but what I read down here just is very, very kind. So if you're among those people that posted kind comments, thank you very much. Wait, where did the chat go? Here. This is probably a big social media YouTube no-go to post a link to another video while you're live streaming, <laughs> but I don't care. I want you to see that video. And I assume most of you know Proko, Stan Prokopenko. If you don't, you should. He's great at what he does and very generous. So I'm trying to keep up with the chat. Give me one second. Having groups of people to paint with is great if that's possible for you. Yeah. K Polly, should you detail the dark or light part first? If you mean light or shadow, I would go for light, definitely, and keep the shadows mysterious and calm. Cool. Okay. Thanks for your patience um, for putting up with my limited screen capabilities. Now we'll, let's go back to the drawing. And I guess there's seven minutes left to do the full hour. I did not make a good drawing and I kind of doubt that I made a, a good speech, but I did something scary and I followed an intuition. So that's all I can do. I am learning right now. Yep. Another thing I'm not sure if I should share, but there was the impulse and I will follow the impulse. I made some very scary decisions recently uh, financially and this week two two amazing things have happened that um, yeah one of them offsets one of the the crazy expenses that I really can't afford but I made it anyway because I felt right the money for that is has come in already and I don't I can't explain it but this is what I mean like I followed my instinct I did something scary that rationally doesn't make any sense like my main mind says Dorian I don't think that's smart but my body my intuition says yes do it it's the right thing to do and more and more I'm trying to, and I'm not just trying, but I'm actually following that. So that's another context. Relationships, art, money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, at the same time, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Don't be stupid, <laughs> you know, really listen to your intuition and then go it through with your mind. And if your intuition is really strong, then do, then do it. Don't be too trigger happy. And it's probably different for, for everyone. We're, we're comfortable with different levels of uncertainty. And I keep surprising myself by how comfortable I am with with uncertainty and risk. And so far things have turned out okay, but they won't always. Like that's just, that's the, the odds. Like it's impossible that every risk is going to, um, like every risky decision is gonna work out. That's not gonna happen.
for those of you working digitally, I like this method of choosing shapes with the lasso and filling them in with the airbrush. And then softening the, the edges, transitions to where you want them to be, how sharp or soft you want them to be. There are many ways of doing that. Uh, one is the mixer brush. Now I'm erasing some lines or making them less important by softening them. And that's something that comes from traditional media for me, like going with the finger over lines. So the lines are still there, but they're blurry and lighter. I think it's a nice way to add life to the drawing. Okay, we'll end in a few minutes. I still don't know if I, <laughs> I can get myself to leave this video up. I'm, I am embarrassed about it. Right now, I am on the side of just delete it. And uh, those of you who were here were lucky or uh, unfortunate enough to witness it. Uh, but it might be gone. Yeah, I, my rational mind says there is really limited value in me blabbering about this stuff. And it's, it feels self-indulgent. <sighs> and so maybe I can be compassionate with me being a little bit self-indulgent. <laughs> the same way I can be compassionate with myself for making drawing mistakes. So that wood should be, I think, much more to the right than I have drawn it initially. Oh, the section lines. Uh, I wonder if they'll be a bit too aggressive now. So instead of section lines, I'll make, I'll follow the form of some of these um, round forms, just to indicate the volumes. I think if I go and make section lines through everything, it might be a bit too harsh. Well, we can do some cross-hatching shading like this, also indications. A few marks like that help a lot to explain the form turns as well. Okay, last couple marks, last couple minutes. There's probably a brush that could create this repeating texture more quickly, but no time, so we do it by hand. Well, I do it by hand, rather. Uh, I love this this line here. Wait, here. Why are you not drawing? Aha. This line with these little uh, serrated lines coming off of it. I would love to spend more time with that and get it just right. I think that's really beautiful. 
my drawing is super simple in that area right now. If I had more time, I would go through, get the curve right and get these lines jutting out. Starting is much harder than stopping for me. <laughs> Wait. Huh, that's wrong. Starting is hard and stopping is hard. Hmm. For me, starting a drawing can be like getting myself to the point where I'm drawing can be quite a <laughs> dance with reasons why I should do other things. But then once I start, it's actually it's usually fine. And then I f it's fine. I find it hard to stop. We're so beautifully strange creatures, making our lives difficult. But I said last few minutes, so I want to keep that promise. And I'm going to call this a done quick sketch of a crab. What is the word? Put it in the chat because I cannot think of it right now. I'll take a final look at the chat and then we'll say goodbye. Oh, I was afraid that people would, would say that this was good, which would motivate me to keep it up and I mean, Keep it online and not delete it. Oh, it was a game changer. Oh, 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 oh. Good, good. I'm glad you guys meant the Proco video. Yes, good. So I can delete this one. <laughs> uh, don't worry too much. Claw, that's the word. Good. Nobody said keep up, keep this video up. So I think I'm probably going to delete it. And I thank you for being there to put up with me. I would like to bring in this psychology stuff and I want to understand it better for myself. And also I know there are so many artists out there who are not making work because they're afraid of what other people think about the work not being good enough. So we have to support each other. I, we need more art. We need more freedom. I care about that. <laughs> That's, I'm not sure. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you all for coming, for being here. I'll be there again next Monday. I think I, sh I should be able to make it work. <sighs> do courageous things. Listen to the impulse in the moment and do it. And I promise you, something good, and if not good, something exciting will happen and something fun is very likely to happen. So have fun with it. Take care. Bye.